Hello, leader. Welcome back to the Fierce Factor podcast. It's your host, Kaylee here, and you are tuning in to episode 231. And I decided to have an interview with myself. (laughs) Welcome to Honest Conversations. I'm really excited about this series. Last week, I chatted with Jessica Christie, one of my business besties, and hopefully you got a chance to catch that episode I feel like we can talk for hours and hours and hours uh, about all of the nuances of growing, um, I think, growing together and like leveling up um, as as humans and experiencing that level up through the, the beautiful vessel of our business. And it's exciting to see, I think, just checking in year, year after year and checking in with ourselves and seeing where we have come and how far we have come toward uh, the process of becoming that person that we envision ourselves to be. And I know I've been spending a lot of time visualizing who Kaylee of 2025 is going to be. And I've been asking myself questions like, does this decision, does this choice, does this activity, does this habit align with that next version of who I want to become. And I had that moment this week going back to a conference that we were at last year at Aesthetic Next. And um, I was just sort of recapping. Everyone kept, keeps asking, how was the conference? How was the conference? And I said, well, what's the, it was great, but like, what is the, what's the measurement, <laughs> you know, um, was a little slow for us on the on the exhibitor side, but there were just some big wins for me. Um, Obviously networking is so great and to have a place where everyone can go be together. And certainly the reason why I have worked hard to provide those types of experiences in person for our Academy members um, and also putting on alt this year, but also there were just some wins for me personally being able to stand in an environment where I could look back and re-examine myself in the same sort of environment, but a year later. And one cool thing for me was um, having Krista speak on stage and share her expertise in public speaking and dynamic communication and thought leadership. And she's been with us just Uh, over a year, about a year and a half. And I actually met her in person for the first time. We're a virtual company. So I met her for the first time in, in Dallas last year, we flew her out to get all of the team together. She was in New York at the time. And for those of you, if you don't know Krista and are listening to this, like, who's that? Um, She is one of our strategic growth advisors at KLC. And she has a very strong um, talent and brilliance for coaching public presence and essentially spent a lot of time working with corporate CEOs, high level executives on teaching them leadership communication skills, and also how to present and command authority and magnetize essentially their teams, big, huge teams of people. And how do you move and inspire people it comes so much down to your language and the words that you use, but also the way you use them and the energy and passion that you put behind them. And one of those key strategies is through storytelling. And so she did a talk on the one technique to command the stage in a way that would get you a standing ovation every time. And that was through storytelling. And so When uh, she came last year to meet with the team, I told her that it was my goal for her to speak on stage about public speaking, because there's about 100 faculty members at that conference and a lot of the conferences, and yet there isn't really anybody teaching about that. So I thought that was really cool to um, see that come to fruition. And I was proud as a leader to have um, helped facilitate that experience, but also obviously to showcase so many of my incredible team members when I started my business as a personal brand. And so I think a lot of those types of emotions that 
uh, I feel in terms of having pride for my team. And I know many of the women we work with who've like gone through kind of the struggle, like the, ugh, the, the, the dirty parts of like the ick of hiring and firing and building. And you finally get like a core solid team in place. And there's just, it's never going to, obviously there's a lot of work that goes into every day. Let's be honest, but you know, there's obviously so much growth that's happened to get to this point to finally be in a place to um, attract the kind of exceptional world-class talent that we have on this team. And while I was at the conference, I, I've i kind of become this person who I'm not much of a note taker. Of course, there's a few things where I'm like, oh, I learned that and that was cool. Um, but I like to think about the big picture topics that are, I think that are more like, that could be movements, right? That like people are really thinking about that I see as, as big key shifts in perspective and in the way that as a collective, let's say like faculty and audience at a conference in an industry, what are people talking about, not just on stage, but what questions are being asked in the room? What kind of conversations are happening at dinner? What kind of meetings are people engaging in with us at, at our booth in the exhibit hall? What are vendors talking about? And so I like to kind of take all of those pieces and put it into here are some of the big things that I think are were on my mind and follow up from from those few days, five days last week. And so to put a little bit of structure behind what I want to talk about today, I'd like to a engage you in this idea of honest conversations and for you to join me through this series of conversations that both you and I will be having and I'll be having as interviews with women that we work with and women in our industry and men uh, who have a contrarian leadership perspective, somebody who has blazed their own trail, you know, um, conversations with people and with ideas that are a little bit outside of the box of what we're seeing routinely on social media or what industry is saying to us and telling us about. And I think it's refreshing. It's refreshing to me. And, you know, as Jessica and I were talking after our podcast last week, it just feels really, um, something feels really like, like, I don't know, like flowy, <laughs> just in alignment with the idea of being honest, even if it might you know, trigger people or it might make people feel like, what is she talking about? And, you know, to be honest, I went back and looked at a podcast I recorded back uh, in 2021 uh, about contrarian leadership. It was a reflections episode, you know, over three years ago. And I just, my, my perspective hasn't changed. I still think that leadership requires saying things that other people are, might be thinking and, or might not be thinking and aren't really going to speak up about. And, and I want to be that for us here. And I want to uh, facilitate that experience and allow my guests to be able to have a platform to express those special voice, you know, the, the little things like those little agitations that we all have and know about um, that we're maybe only feeling comfortable talking about either to our journal or to our best friend. So there's just a few points that I wanted to um, kind of touch base on as it relates to some of the key takeaways that I had from uh, our conference over the past week. Um, and number one, so I've got four, four things written down here. So number one was let's normalize employee turnover. And the reason being is there's a lot of questioning and conversations and strategy and work that we all are doing around how to retain employees. And I was sitting in the room in which case two of our Academy members, Dr. Sarah Trammell and Dana Zeitler, um, by the way, if you're listening, beautiful job on that panel, were a part of a panel about employee performance and retention. And I, it seemed to me that of all of the questions that were asked, um, I, I start, started to think to myself, like maybe that we have, we are asking the wrong question. I wonder if 
in a space where we have so many empath female business owners who primarily think about how to keep employees happy and how do I continue to give and to open up and to pour into the people that I have that I have found more often than not the the contrary in the sense that um, the challenge with many of the females we work with is being okay with letting go of employees when it's time to let them go. And I have yet to meet somebody who has built a really, really successful thriving team who hasn't been through some sort of turnover um, or at gotten to a point at some point, an inflection point where they were with great people that they had at one time who then became sort of where the business outgrew them or their goals changed or they became misaligned. And I think that we need to instead worry so much or focus solely on retaining and keeping employees, but to be okay with the idea that we are building an ecosystem in which we're engaging people to come into an agreement with us in our business. Nobody has a gun to their head to be here. Um, there, this is it, an open, you know, at will employment opportunity. And so if we get to a point where what we have agreed to offer an employee and what they've agreed to contribute in terms of their activities to produce this synergistic result is not in alignment, that is okay. And so I would like to normalize employee turnover. I would like to normalize, let's say, letting go employees who have not grown with the company when the company is growing fast. Um, now that's not to say that we shouldn't be allowing our employees to grow within the infrastructure of our company and giving them those tools and focusing on their growth plan and developing the skills that they're going to need to grow with us. But if at some point an employee is not right uh, for our company, then that's okay. And it's not a reflection on us as a leader. It does not mean that we were not a great boss. It does not mean that we don't know how to run a business. It doesn't mean that we are an awful human. Um, it means none of those things. And too often we lose somebody and then we get this hiring PTSD and it stagnates us. And then we can't move forward and hire somebody else or we bring elements of that experience into the new experience of trying to continue to grow and build with this new uh, infrastructure. And the point is that that employee is probably not grown with the company. The company's outgrown that employee and maybe even outgrown us as a leader. And so the focus really needs to intrinsically be on our ability to move past what has happened and to grow into the kind of leader who is now capable of building the team for this next iteration of the business. And the truth is that all failures that happen in business are a learning opportunity. And it's a call to action for us as leaders to learn from our mistakes and then to show up into that same situation in our business through the lens of somebody who's grown and who can handle and is capable of, of achieving our mission and addressing those scenarios and situations and problems through the lens of a more evolved leader. That is the point. And so I think it's okay, A, to normalize employee turnover, and then B, my second takeaway from that, it's a very simple formula for me. If someone was to ask me, how do you get an employee to, to stay around and how do you get them to achieve at a high level? It's very simple to me. Become the kind of leader who magnetizes and attracts great people and great people who want to work hard for the vision of the company. That means people who are aligned with our mission and people who have like-minded attitude and ambition toward achieving their own goals for the same reasons as you. Some food for thought. The second takeaway is that consistency is key. And there is not one one takeaway or one technique or one thing that you can learn that's going to make a ma major shift. It's going to be about the habit of showing up and doing it all the time. And I thought about this with, I asked in every session I taught, what, why are you here today? 
And I heard things all across the board, but a lot of times people just want your, your top 10 list, right? Like, tell me, give me the formula, Kaylee. Like, what is the secret sauce? And the, the truth is, if there was a secret, it wouldn't be one. <laughs> okay. So the point is, it's the uncomfortable um, or even sometimes comfortable, like I'll say just even more boring, like boring stuff that makes big results. So it's the showing up every day. Um, as an example, our Academy members, at some point in time, they get to a point where I, I get to watch these women like go from sitting and taking copious four pages of notes to basically like leaning back and then maybe piping in their advice or a comment or piggybacking on something or sharing a, an experience that they had because they have just shown up and done the work every single day, um, which is so cool. So if you were to look at somebody, a, a new member who came in and somebody who's been with us for four years, they're going to look at them and say, wow, I want to be just like them. And guess what they did is they showed up every single week and they did the work and they went through the process and it was just it's simple part of kind of, it does it itself, right? Like it, it works. If you just show up and put in the little 1%, the 1%, the 1% every single week, then you're going to experience exponential growth and exponential change. My third takeaway was be careful who you take advice from. So this was simply just, uh, an idea that, this in this climate of uh, wanting to be like and copy somebody and model their business model and have a a following like them and have your business look like them and achieve their same success it's really easy to skip to want to skip steps it's really easy to um not know who has actually achieved what you want to achieve. Number one, I think we're not always clear on what we want. Or two, we get sort of suckered or just sort of, I don't know, enamored by the the things that are right in front of us and then forget about what how those things or those decisions are going to take us to where we want to go down the road. So there are people that, you know, I I had conversations with multiple people that will say to me, like, I I I talked in so-and-so about their compensation plan and they're this big time, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, how do you know they're big time or what does big time mean? And then they'll say, well, they have a lot of Instagram followers or, well, they're speaking on a lot of stages and um, we have to be careful, ladies. Like the truth is I'm not, not to say that somebody who has a big following isn't doing a phenomenal job or somebody who is speaking on stage isn't, but Think about exactly what it is that you are trying to achieve and how do you actually know, A, that that person has achieved it and they're not just telling you they have or look like they have, and B, if they achieving that is actually not knocked down 10 other dominoes that would be completely against what your core values are. So I just put that out there. Um, have your your tentacles up or, you know, like be on alert of who you're taking advice from, get to know, do your research um, and be very intentional about what your goal is when you're asking somebody for advice. And more often than not, asking for advice probably will take you down a wrong path than a right path. I would instead seek to find people who can help you insource your wisdom because you have it, you really do. Um, and then to get the resources to support you once you have that answer. Okay, and then wrapping this up, finally, number four, how female entrepreneurs need to be coached. Ah, good one. So. This was interesting. I think we are, think about yourself as if you're, if you listen to this, you're probably either a business owner, you want to be a business owner, or you're an alpha female running and working in a business like an entrepreneur, um, or you're leading a, a kick-ass team probably, or, you know, you're in a position of leadership. We don't like being told what to do. And usually nobody will tell us. And as the boss, guess what? We get to call the shots. A lot of a lot of us started our business for that reason. So 
when we go to these places and we put ourselves in rooms where everybody is kissing our feet and, you know, giving us the compliments and catering to us and telling us the things we want to hear, how much does that really help us? Like it sure helps the ego. It's validating and we need it because we're getting beat up all the time, you know, in a million other ways. But to, in order to grow, what we really need is somebody who's going to tell it like it is. We need somebody who's going to shoot us straight. We need somebody who is going to ask us the difficult questions that make us a little uncomfortable and defensive for a minute. And then we make us really think and ponder what it is that we actually are doing and check ourselves sometimes. And so I, you know, I thought of this, certainly this is the type of coach I am. Anybody who works with me knows this and will tell you that, um, I can, I can be intimidating in the sense that I will ask you questions that are going to make you think about how you are, how you, how you can take accountability for a situation or how your lack of accountability has impacted the situation you're in. Why? Because I think that there's so much freedom and accountability. When you take accountability, you have the power, you have the ultimate say. So whether something turns out good or bad, it's your call. But when you don't take accountability, you abdicate power to somebody else. It means you're powerless. It means that you have no ability to impact the circumstances and that it's somebody else's fault. And I don't think that's ever the case. I also think that we have many times been successful because we're so convicted and um, determined to do things our way. And we're going to, we're going to get what we want. <laughs> like I always say like, okay, tell me I can't and then watch me. Like you want to get out of my way. I think a lot of the women that I work with think like that. Um, big hearts, like big, big, big hearts, big, generous, loving, giving, caring hearts. And I'll also stomp on you if you get in my way of giving that love to whoever I need to give it to. So kind of like that. <clears throat> so we need to look for support and accountability in the people that we surround ourselves with in our communities and the people we hire, believe it or not, like there's people in my company can overrule me, <laughs> not many, but there are certain things like my calendar, for example, that I will routinely need to get overruled because I'll want to squeeze too much in, or, you know, I won't allow enough time for something to really become fruitful and build. I'm impatient. I want to move quickly, you know, and so I put accountabilities in place to hold me to the realities of what I need, even though I think I want something else, if that makes sense. And I also think that when you look for a coach or you look for an advisor or a mentor, you need somebody who is going to talk to you at the level of which you guys can be on the same page and, and ask you those difficult questions and challenge you in, in ways that are going to make you think about your strategies differently and to check yourself in a in, so to speak. And someone said to me, I got this, I get this a lot, like, well, I don't want to go into a group program. So like, I just want to, you know, do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I say, well, what's, What's, why wouldn't you want to be a part of a group? Oh, I'm just not a group person. And if you feel like that, and I've been there, I've been in many groups and I've had these feelings. Um, you're not in the right group because when you are, you will be almost, you'll be nervous and excited and almost in awe that you are a part of that group and that community. So, um, and you will have, you will have other people around you that think at that high level. And most communities are not built like that. Like 99% of them are not curated in that way. And so I totally understand why you feel like that. But to the point of being careful who you take advice from, you have to put yourself um, in the right room. And then you have to know that you have to trust that if you're getting into a program, you know, that you're what you're you're counting on and trusting the person who facilitated that that group to curate the right kind of people together. And that's, that's what you're paying for essentially. So, um, that is, that is, those are my takeaways, my four takeaways. Um, and 
I'm just really excited to continue the series of honest conversations. I'd love for you to send me a DM if you have an idea, or even if there's somebody that you think I should talk to on the fierce factor and let me know, um, you know, a little bit about why, um, and let me know or who, and let me know what kind of conversations that you want to have. I love getting these messages from you guys. And, um, and then I will finally say that we are like almost at capacity and confidence to scale. We may be by the time that this podcast launches. So if you are considering work together this year, um, this is the time to do it. We're relaunching our six week program. You can learn more at klcconsultants.com forward slash scale. And um, you can apply there and um, this is a, an immersive program that is going to help you get out of overwhelm in your business and get the system and the blueprint in place to transform into the CEO that your business needs. If you want to scale up, if you're at that inflection point, like if you have days where one day you want to sell your business and the next day you want to build an Amazon, this is for you. <laughs> okay. And like hashtag, you know, if you know, you know, all right. So don't, don't skip this. This is your first accountability. I'm going to be there for you. Like I'm telling you, if you've been thinking about this for a while, stop listening to all those little voices, trying to talk you out of getting what you need. You know, this is right for you. Okay. That's it. That's all I have for today. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you same place, same time next week.